Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing Fish Rising by Steve Hillage. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. But before we start off this video, I just want to thank everyone who tuned in to the live stream yesterday. It was amazing, amazing, so, so, so good. And before I forget, the live stream unfortunately has been blocked as 7 out of the 15 songs that we listened to are definitely copyrighted. And you know what? I'm fine with that. It makes sense, but if you want to see the set list, the amazing set list of songs that we had back then, you can go and check out my Patreon. The link is in the description or in the channel's about page. I've made a post over there and it's free for the public to see. You don't need to pay and you can check out that post and you can see the songs that we listened to. And there were so many good songs off of that. And I had such an amazing time. Thank you so, so much for everyone. Now, I just today realized that I'm actually laughing lacking one more episode to actually catch on to the schedule so I'll have to make two episodes and upload them too so this is the first upload of today and the second one will come shortly after but anyway enjoy some of my favorite bits from this album So let's start off this review by talking about no other than the Canterbury scene. Now instead of giving you the factual overview and the history of the Canterbury scene, instead I'm gonna tell you about this very interesting occurrence through the eye of one man. And that man is of course Steve Hillage, also known as Steve Hillfish. So, Hillage was born in Chingford in 1951, and at the age of 17, while still attending school, he would go on to form a band called Uriel with a few friends. So, the band would consist of him on guitars and Dave Stewart on the keyboards, as well as Mont Campbell on the bass and Clive Brooks on the drums. And while the band Uriel wouldn't go on to last that long, the band would pretty much quickly disband, and three of its members, except for Hillage himself, would go on to form yet another band which you might know called Egg. So Hillage now on his own would go on to write some original material and he would also go on to befriend bands like Spiragaira and Caravan and even jam with them on occasions. But in 1971 he was tired of being alone and he wanted to actually make music and release it so he formed a new band which is called Khan. Now I've actually done a review of Khan's music with the form of their only album called Space Shanty. Now as it happens that video is my least viewed video on the channel as a whole so I know that I was bad at making videos back then but if you want to go and check that review out you can go ahead and give that video some love because it definitely does deserve it. Now Khan would go on to play even before releasing their debut album in 1972 but unfortunately disagreements between Hillage and bassist and vocal vocalist Nick Greenwood would leave Greenwood to actually depart from the band and leave them to their own. Now after the release of Space Shanty, Hillage would try 
and form a new lineup for the band which wouldn't last so long. But in the time before Khan ultimately disbanded, they would go on to work on some few new tracks to their track list, which one of them was I Love It's Holy Mystery, which would go on to form the basis of the first track of today's album, which is Solar Music Suite. But as I said, in 1972, Khan would break up and yet again Hillage was on his own solo journey. And in this time, he would befriend someone known as Kevin Ayers and would go on to play with him and even tour with him around Europe mainly. And while playing with Kevin Ayers, Hillage would also be introduced to a band called Gong from France. And on tour in France, he would actually leave Ayers and go on to join Gong as a new player. And the addition of Steve Hillage into Gong would prove to be very, very fruitful for the band, in which time they recorded the Radio Known trilogy of albums, which is until this day known to be probably their best set of three albums. And for Hillage himself, this move was remarkable and it really let him explore new grounds and develop upon himself and his own musical style. But of course, Hillage being Hillage, he would go on to leave that band in 1975 after two of its lead members would go on to depart the band and the Virgin Records label would basically want him to assume the role of leadership, but he didn't want to do so, so he left the band as well. But before doing so, in 1974, he would use the members of Gong to help him record his debut album, which is also the album we're reviewing today called Fish Rising. And if it wasn't understood quite yet, the naming of Fish Rising is of course because of his nickname being Steve Hillfish. Now, why did I even find the need to tell you all of this about Steve Hillage? Well, the fact of the matter is, this guy was always at the heart of the Canterbury scene. What developed in due years as the Canterbury scene would have never been the same without Steve Hillage in the middle of it all. And I didn't mention many groups and many individuals with whom he was in contact and he played with them and he jammed with them. People like, you know, like uh, National Health and Mike Oldfield and, you know, many more people. This dude was at the center of it all and we all must be grateful for what he did, giving us this amazing subgenre of prog that lasts until today. Now, before I get into the actual review part of this album, I must say this quick disclaimer. I have never heard anything from Gong's discography, though I am anxiously waiting to do so. And the reason that's important is because many people call this album a very much Gong-like album, with of course a bit more emphasis on guitars, seeing as that's the instrument of choice for Steve Hillage himself. Now, I don't know what Gong sounds like quite yet, but after listening to this album, I can tell you very much that I am longing to hear them at last. So this album opens up with, to say the least, a masterpiece, and this first track is called Solar Music Sweet. This song screams Canterbury as loud as it can get, with the ambience in the field to the keyboards that sound like Caravan and the right middle ground between psych rock and experimental rock and folk rock. It's just amazing. I really love that and it's definitely one of my favorite Canterbury songs ever, even if I've heard it only two days ago. I would actually go as far as to call this one the first track and the last track on the album called Afterglid a sort of a Steve Hillage tubular bells with the structure of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Because these two songs feel like very deep pieces, like they were made from the bottom of Hillage's heart and put into music form. But there's also this really nice sense of journey that you're going through, the same as you'd find on Shine On You Crazy Diamond, especially with the latter sounding at some points a lot like it. And the funny thing about this, I can point many parallels between this album and how it feels to the album Rock Bottom by Robert Wyatt. And that's really odd to me because overall as a consensus I really like today's album like Fish Rising it's a great album but if you must remember my review of Rock Bottom by Robert Wyatt was 
and less than favorable and many of you guys didn't really understand that and now at this current moment I don't understand it as well because these two albums have a lot of similarities, maybe a little less experimentalism or at least going in different directions of experimentation, but while I find the former very very good, the latter is, well, still kind of unfavorable with me. Now after we finish off with the great opener suite, we then get some to what I might call palette cleansers in the form of the tracks Fish and Meditation, both of them being quite different from one another but serving sort of the same purpose purpose as some sort of a transitional pieces to which they lead to the fourth track on this album which follows the basic narrative of this entire album called aptly The Salmon Song. And this track as well it's a fantastic track and I really like it. I do think that it does go a little bit more rockier than the first and last tracks on this album but honestly it's really good and it's really fun to listen to and it still does know how to change the moods from time to time while also always coming back to the same baseline of the rock grooves which makes this a very interesting and slightly more accessible track as a whole but personally I don't think that it is as good as the two others that I've mentioned. And of course this album finishes off with the second opus of the album called Afterglid. Now this one I like it for all the same reasons as I like the first track on this album but as well there is yet another reason I do like its inclusion of Indian sounds and Indian music. The the tablet drums, the sitar, but usually when I talk about these instruments and these kinds of songs, I tell you that I don't particularly like them and I've done so quite recently within the search of the lost chord by the moody blues, but in this instance I just really like the fusion that it features on it, it's really fun, really enjoyable, I could really get a lot from it and honestly this track is just perfect. So while I never really fell in love with any of the albums that came out of the Canterbury scene, maybe the closest one has to be in the land of Grey and Pink, My Caravan, and that's of course a basic, you know, choice, I still don't think that it's an album which I believe to be perfect, but I do think that today's album of choice, Fish Rising by Steve Hillage, is definitely a contender for that spot. So while still being a bit out of my comfort zone, I do think that in due time this one will grow on me for sure and I'll appreciate every single aspect of it as I'm doing a little bit of that right now and in the future I'll probably do more of that. So guess who made this cover? Okay j just take a gander. Who made this cover? Well it's Steve. It's Steve Hillage. He also made this cover. Aside for being a skillful guitar player and, you know, a great composer as a whole, as we've seen on this album, apparently is also a superb visual artist. I love this cover so, so much, and I love everything that has to do with fish. I love fish so much. My pencil case is a fish. It's just amazing. And probably the thing that I like most about how this album is construed and portrayed is the fact that Steve. Steve Hillage, also known as of course Steve Hillfish, just kind of embraces this sort of mocking identity that he got, of course it's not mocking you if you embrace it, and I just really like how he uses that as his own leverage, the same way basically as Chris Squire used it when people used to call him Fish for taking longer than usual bass, and then he released also his debut solo album called Fish Out of Water. And the drawing, the painting of this cover is just superb, it looks so so good, I would have been impressed by it even if I didn't know that it was made by Hillage, but knowing that it's made by Hillage is just all the more better. He's such a talented person and it really shows and I really like how this one is sort of symmetrical but also not so because it wasn't copied one half at a time but instead it was drawn as a whole thus you get these sort of dissimilarities between the sides but as a whole it does make for one very symmetrical piece. And you know I think that making an album cover for this album in particular is pretty much a daunting task. I believe that most graphic designers or artists that would have been given this type of music and told to make a cover for it would probably struggle with it because it's not that straightforward what you're actually listening to. But pretty much not surprisingly, Steve Hillage was able to capture this type of music in his cover perfectly, superbly, and I guess that's only reasonable seeing as he's the one behind it all. 
So you might call Hillage a fish and you might also call me a chicken because for now I'm gonna disdain from giving this one the perfect rating just because it's still a bit out of my comfort zone so for now it's getting a very good rating of 9 out of 10 but I think that in due time I will change my mind on it. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're gonna be listening to No Me Acuerdo by Proyecto Antimateria. They're not Italian, I just kind of did an Italian accent, they're actually from Mexico as I gather, so it's gonna be very much interesting. I of course want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Wan and Rist of Kings and Lindsay Haycox, you guys are just the best and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon you can find the link down in the description or in my about page but that's what it guys have a wonderful day and i'll catch you all tomorrow bye guys